We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. What is up, everybody? Ryan from Sports Card Radio. That's right. We're back for another special edition of the R-Rated Podcast. This time to talk about a true American card tragedy, the story, the ongoing drama of Cardboard Connection owner Mike Smith. This time, some of the situations he's involved with, with both in and out of the courtroom really could have serious ramifications for Cardboard Connection and his ownership in the site. And Cardboard Connection has become one of the more popular sports card information sites out there. It has helped inform collectors. And if you've listened to the show in the, in the past, if if this isn't your first time listening, you know that oftentimes I talk about on the show, how informed collectors spend more money. It's one of the things, if you listen to the PSA quarterly conference calls, informed collectors spend more money. That's why PSA, you know, they, they have a set registry. They have a population report. They give you a price guide. They try to give you more and more information. I think that they've, they've even come out with some new tools recently to try to do that. Beckett does the same thing as well. Try to inform you of the sets that are coming out. The manufacturers do it to, de- to a degree. I think they could do a lot better. But somebody like Mike Smith has a created a website like Cardboard Connection where he essentially copies and pastes or aggregates check lens information or card set information or odds or pictures or um, auction prices or whatever it is that, 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 that he puts on that site or the people that work for him. And he's done this over a number of years and it's become a resource for people in the hobby. Uh, a pretty valuable resource to people in the hobby. And the sole owner or, or the 90% owner of Cardboard Connection is Mike Smith. And uh, there are some serious, serious legal dramas playing out in courtrooms across the state of Georgia that uh, could impact Cardboard Connection and certainly his ownership of the site. To show you how special this show is, we will be joined later by Colin host of the sports card show on sportscardradio.com. But first, you know what I, I feel like I should do? I feel like I should fill you in on the updated Mike Smith timeline over the last couple of years and really his downward spiral and kind of where things stand today. And then we can bring in Colin and talk about the future of the site and what might happen there. So sit back and relax. Let's talk about the American card tragedy and the ongoing drama for Mike Smith. So the downward spiral for Mike Smith really started about two years ago, March 17th, 2016. He was arrested on five felony counts, three counts of aggravated assault, two counts of terroristic threats. Uh, Turned out he assaulted three people with a gun and threatened to kill them. About a year later, on February 9th, 2017, he does plead guilty to aggravated assault and terroristic threats. He receives six years probation and a thousand dollar fine. It was, uh, he was a first time offender. He got put into a first time offender program. That'll become key later on. So in February, again, he, he pleads guilty to these, to these things, to these felonies. In December, so about six months ago, December 27th, 2017, Smith and his wife become separated. I mention this only because this becomes uh, kind of key to the timeline later on. So they become separated about six months ago, December 27th, 2017. Smith's wife formally files for divorce in Georgia on February 21st, 2018. Now get this, not four days later, Four days after Smith's wife files for divorce, Mike Smith is picked up on five new felony charges and get a load of these ones. Possession of heroin. Possession of ecstasy. Another possession of a Schedule 1 drug. Possession of a firearm during a felony. Possession of a firearm by a first offender probationer. So... Pretty rough week for Mike Smith. His wife files for divorce, and then he gets picked up on five new felony charges. 
So during this time, there's a there's an ongoing divorce proceeding going on in Georgia. And so two weeks or about two weeks later, so two weeks after he's picked up on these felony charges, Mike Smith's wife has to file an emergency motion with the court to essentially take over cardboard connection and make it a party in their divorce. Meaning if the Smiths do kind of follow through with their divorce, it will be one of the things that gets divided up. And the site is said to earn up to $250,000 a year. Uh, probably at one point it did. I would think um, as we continue to talk and as we bring on my brother, uh, we'll talk later about kind of maybe what the site makes and, and kind of what it means the future for the site. But it, it is the sole income for Smith and their two children. And and it it certainly, while I don't think it makes a quarter million dollars a year presently, um, it probably does generate fairly significant income um, for the Smees. So again, Smees wife files for this motion. Hey, I need to take over this site. This is me and my husband's site. This is an asset we have. We're getting divorced, but I need to take this over right now because this guy, you know, is in the loony bin, you know, and it's spelled out the, the, in the court documents, it's spelled out, Hey, he pled guilty for these aggravated assaults and terroristic threats. And Oh yeah, two weeks ago, he just got popped for heroin, ecstasy and gun charges. So as you can expect the very next day, the, a, a court in Georgia granted Mike Smith's wife, uh, essentially to be the operator of the sole operator of cardboard connection. So at this point, Smith is completely pushed out of cardboard connection, password, everything locked out. Like the guy's gone, his site's gone. And in those court docu- documents, Smith is uh, stipulated as the a 90% owner of cardboard connection. Not sure who the other 10% is. It could be his wife. Well, so Smith gets kicked out of the site. Two weeks later, Mike Smith hacks into his wife's email account, accesses the cardboard connection PayPal account, takes, and there's a discrepancy in the court documents, either $6,500 or $8,500. So takes that money, puts it into his account or, or transfers or does whatever with it. In court documents, it says Cardboard Connection is unable to make payroll. And a court orders uh, Smith in contempt for the, again, for the ruling that he's no longer an operator of the site. His wife was granted, you know, so, sole oper- to be the sole operator of the site while the divorce proceedings play out. So Smith was held in contempt. He was I think a warrant was issued for his arrest and he was ordered to pay back the money. There's no evidence or or, or we haven't seen anything that says if the money was paid back or if Smith was arrested for this. Um, But get this. So he takes the money on March 30th. Three days later on April 2nd, he's back in court. And pleads not guilty to the five, again, the five felony charges, the heroin, the ecstasy, and the gun charges. And I'll just put this really blunt. Mike Smith is lucky that two things. One, that he's white. And two, that he either had or has at least a couple bucks in his pocket because he did get a good attorney for this. And on April, so he pleads not guilty on April 2nd. On April 12th. There was a nolle prosecque, I don't, uh, probably didn't pronounce that right, ruling, a formal notice to not prosecute. So it appears that he will not be prosecuted for the heroin, the ecstasy, and the two gun charges that I believe come out of Fulton County. Uh, the divorce is out of Cobb County, and that might have been, I think that was the Cobb County is where his first arrest happened. So a break for Smith, but all is not done for Mike Smith because on May 1st, 2018, Smith did admit and sign to violating his probation. Again, this will be the probation for the 2016 arrest, the aggravated assault, the terroristic threats that landed him on six years probation. So he violated that, admits to violating that. Uh, He failed to report and he moved or left the state without notifying his probation officer. 
For that, he got 30 days in jail starting on May 1st. And he was recommended for work release. Um, so I don't, again, I don't know how it works in Georgia if he has to be in jail at night and then he can be let out and go to work and come back or if he can be out and be monitored. I don't, again, I don't know, but if, if he was sentenced to 30 days in jail on March on, excuse me, May 1st, he would, it's, we're recording this on May 23rd. So he would presumably, uh, still be in zip in jail if they're crediting full days. Now I know in some places like in California, eight hours, every eight hours you're in jail, that counts as one day. So for 24 hours, that counts as three days. Um, kind of a, a weird thing. Again, you'd have to look at how the days are counted in Georgia. And again, it was checkmarked that he was recommended for work release. Again, I don't know what type of job he has that he doesn't, uh, he's locked out a cardboard connection, but, um, So some legal things there. And so far, that's where we're at with the timeline. There is another divorce uh, hearing in the the divorce proceeding that occurs on June 11th. And again, the the divorce proceeding is very crucial here if that gets followed through and the wife is completely done with Mike Smith. Because if the wife is completely done with Mike Smith, there is a probably a very good, good chance she ends up as the sole owner of Cardboard Connection or the website has to be sold and the proceeds divided uh, between the two. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, you know when you start hearing the bad boys music, what that means, Mr. Rolex, Mr. Benz himself, Colin, the host of the Sports Card Show podcast, has just called in. Colin, how are we doing? I'm doing great. You know, I'm just out here in California waiting for, uh, I heard uh, old Michael Smith uh, stole $8,500 from the Cardboard Connection PayPal. I was wondering when he was going to get over here and give me that gas money. He promised me... Uh, four or five years ago uh, i'd like to head out to the national uh in a few months so if he could you know send a little bit of that paypal my way uh that'd be great that's right a little refresher for anybody that's not familiar mike smith did on twitter before his uh little downward spiral that we'll get into in a minute before his downward spiral did promise to give us gas money to the quote next card event. So, and again, you drive a Mercedes Benz that, that uh, probably takes premium gas out there in California. So, you know, hopefully some of that money he took, maybe he sent, maybe he sent it your way. Maybe there's a check coming, some cash or, or a Western union or money gram or something. What do you think about this whole Mike Smith situation? Good Lord. I mean, 10 felt he's been charged with 10 felonies in two years. He gets off on five. We got heroin, ecstasy, guns, a divorce. I mean, holy shit. What, what, do, what do you think about Mike Smith? I mean, his life has completely fell apart. Uh, I mean, he's just, uh, he obviously has a drug problem. Uh, I think he probably has money problems, uh, despite uh, the, the reports that Cardboard Connection makes a uh, quarter million dollars a year and that he, you know, if you're hacking into a PayPal account, to take 8500 bucks, then, uh, you know, you're definitely on your last dollar. He's had legal problems, uh, which probably has cost him a little bit of cash uh, to get out of those. So uh, this is a guy who has drug problems, legal problems, marital problems, and... Um, father know, problems kind of as well. He's a father of two children, so he has huge father issues as well. Yeah, I mean, he's got, he's got bigger issues in his life than this website. Um, but the problem is he's going to lose it all. He's going to lose his website. He's going to lose all his money. He's going to lose his freedom. He's going to lose his family. And I'm sure at some point, you know, you hope somebody like that looks back on his life and starts making some changes. But, um, again, this is not a guy I've ever talked to. I've never spoken to this guy. I've never met him. If you hadn't put his mugshot up on our website a couple different times, I'd have no idea what this guy looks like. So you kind of hope that, hey, maybe this guy can, uh, you know, snap out of it and get himself clean and turn his life around. But again, from what I've heard from not just people that don't like him, I've heard from people that have worked from him that he's a complete asshole. He's a dick. 
And uh, so, you know, maybe in some cases, some ways, he's getting what uh, getting what he deserves. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lose any sleep over this guy. He's a clown. And uh, I think he's getting exactly what uh, he deserves in life. And, and that's the shitter, basically. Well, you know who might lose a, lose a little bit of sleep over Mike Smith is the wife. And they're going through this divorce and the website is their sole income. Again, you says it, you mentioned that it says in court documents it makes up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, uh, again, that's probably on the the high end of the estimation of the that's top. revenue. Let's be clear, that's that's revenue. Okay, Mike Smith was known for rolling five, six, seven deep to the industry summit to the national, and he would get booths that would cost thousands and thousands of dollars obviously pay for hotels and meals and flights and all this and so i'm sure uh, several times a year he was forking over five figures to just attend a card event um and so this is a guy who uh blew a tremendous amount of money uh and and he's not posting this any of this information himself or kind of really uh, you know running the site kind of on his own time he is paying other people to devote their time and effort into posting articles, posting content and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, the site, you know, makes a quarter million dollars a year. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. It's probably, uh, you know, I could easily see it being in that ballpark. But again, this is a guy who, uh, wasn't always uh, frugal in terms of the expenses and, um, has several employees, several people writing for the site. And my guess is, is those people make, um, a, a certain, probably not a livable wage, but at least a little bit of money. So, you know, it could be impressive uh, to a lot of people that a website could make co- a quarter million dollars, but you start striping out a, a lot of the expenses and things like that. And uh, while it, it might still be a, a very reasonable sum, maybe a north of $100,000 of net income, if you've got a drug habit and you've got legal problems and you've got two kids and a wife that's trying to divorce you, all of a sudden you got no money because there are athletes that make hundreds of millions of dollars and all of a sudden get one divorce and they're working at Starbucks. So, <laughs> um, one, you know, wouldn't surprise me that, that Cardboard Connection do, does relatively well uh, for a website. But again, uh, th- there is a lot of uh, expenses, a lot of work that, that's involved. And if, if Smith is hacking into his wife's account to pull out eighty five hundred dollars, come on. Well, I mean, and then they miss payroll, supposedly. Exactly. So there's there's literally no, you know, the, Mike Smith would surprise me if he's like about ninety percent of the people out there that have no savings, literally no savings. So yeah, he's made a quarter million dollars a year, maybe for the last X Y Z years, but guarantee you, it's all gone to his heroin habit, his ecstasy habit his legal troubles, it's gone to paying employees to go uh, chill at the National and uh, the Industry Summit and booths and stuff. And what has he gotten out of it? Absolutely nothing. So, um, and he's going to end up with absolutely nothing. He's going to end up with no website, no money, no family, and, and potentially no freedom since uh, it, it's, you know, if he was a black man, he'd be facing, you know, he'd be behind bars and facing 20 years in jail. Uh, but, you know, my guess is he'll, he'll spend some time in, time in jail and uh you know that might actually be the best thing for him so if the wife follows through on the divorce and the again cardboard uh, connection is their sole uh or in in court documents it says it's their sole income to their family it's probably unless they own some kind of real estate or, or have some other kind of huge asset it's probably the biggest asset between them if she follows through gets the, the divorce how do you think this gets divided up. Smith is as uh, is listed in documents as a ninety percent owner. We don't know who the other ten percent is. It could be the wife. Do what do you think will happen to this website? Uh, given Smith, even though he owns, you know, he's the pretty much the sole owner of this site. What do you think is going to happen to this? Given his uh, downward spiral. Well, unless Johnny Cochran uh, rises from the dead and walks through the door, I'm pretty sure he's going to end up with nothing. Uh, from what I was reading, again, I'm not a lawyer or not, and certainly don't try to pretend to be one, but from what I was reading about Georgia state law, which is where this is getting litigated, um, it, it appears that a judge can basically award uh, the website to whoever they feel uh, fit, and it, it seems like, um, according to court documents, that's already happened. So 
Mike Smith is already basically gone from his website. So he's he's pretty much gone. He'd really have to convince a court and convince a judge that he has uh, the ability and uh, you know kind of deserves to take the, again, like you said, um, it, it doesn't appear there's a lot of lot of assets that these guys are dividing up outside of this website. So, and, and, and the wife has, has children to take care of. So a judge is, is, you know, is in a, is in a spot where it's okay. I'm going to award this website back to a guy that's a 90% owner, but is constantly got in trouble with the law while being on parole. So, or being on probation. So I, I really see it as, um, you know, he, his best option is to go to jail and to clean his life up. Um, you know, get get clean, get off the drugs, uh, and hopefully get out of jail. And honestly, the only hope for him to get that website back is that his wife uh, takes him back and, and reconciles with him uh, w- once he uh, gets his life clean. So, really, you know, I've known people that have been on a drug habit and they've gone to jail and they've come out clean. So hopefully, for his sake, his family's sake, that's uh, what happens to him. But it, it doesn't seem like after his first little run-in with the law and getting put on six years probation that he really learned a whole lot since he was uh, essentially committing uh, you know, similar types of acts uh, you know, just a couple months ago. And then he, he, he compiled that by hacking into his wife's account and basically taking the family money. And you know, I don't think it takes a genius that uh, Smith probably took that money and blew it on some drugs and, and whatever else he was going to do um, instead of it going to his wife and his kids. So it just shows you the state of mind this guy's in. He doesn't, uh, he, you know, uh, quite frankly, running Cardboard Connection is the, the least of his concerns and the least of his worries. It, it really, the website really should go to, if it's truly making a quarter million dollars and supporting a family, it should stay in their hands and, uh, and allow a, a family that um, is at least trying to um, live a normal life, allow them to continue to do that as long as the website uh, can stay up and stay profitable. Right. And I, I don't know the wife, you know, she could slide into my DMS if, if she wants to, but I don't, I don't know the wife, but I honestly think pretty much anybody that's not hooked on ecstasy or heroin could pro or maybe, maybe even if you are hooked on ecstasy and heroin, you could run this site because they have some, uh, either some overseas workers or some U S robots who are, you know, just turn out this content again. I think I talked about it at the beginning of the show. This isn't, you know, this isn't New York times, uh, or Breitbart or whoever, whoever you really like level of reporting here. This is, you know, literally people copy and pasting checklist or putting, uh, compiling stuff that happened on eBay. It's just aggregating data and stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, c- cardboard connects is not putting up, uh, is not making news. You can literally get all, they literally get all these checklists right off Panini's site or Top's website or Leaf's website. So they're, they're really just um, taking content and kind of repurposing. And I'm not criticizing that. I'm not saying that's not a, a good way to make money or anything like that. Or, or, uh, but, you know, it's not, um, it's not a complicated, you know, I could totally see how the, right. It's not complicated. Not, That's what we're saying. Know, it's, right. It's not, it's not, it's not complicated. complicated. Obviously this guy's been hooked on drugs and been in and out of, uh, prison and, and in and out of the, you know, the slammer for the last, uh, year or two. And, and the site, you know, hasn't, you know, I don't know. It's not a site that I go to, um, because like I said, you can go to Panini's website, you can go to Beckett's website. There's a lot of other websites that you could go to, uh, quite frankly, to find uh, the same or similar information, depending on how you're, you're trying to consume, whether it be a checklist or the news of the day or whatnot. So it's not a, um, you know, it's not a complex website. And I can totally see how a wife who may or may not know anything about cards, may or may not know anything about a website, could probably take, uh, you know, two weeks to 30 days and figure out how it all works and probably be competent, especially with the pressure of it being, um, you know, this is what's feeding my family. Uh, you know, I can imagine a mother trying to feed her family, uh, could watch, you know, a few hours of YouTube videos and then be able to run cardboard connection probably better than Smith was because as we know, Smith wasn't a card guy, 
what you know wasn't particularly interested in cards. He was probably his best um, skill set was pro- probably being a salesman or kind of a hustler. And um, but at this point, uh, you know, sh- you know, cardboard connection isn't really in its hustle stage anymore. It's really just in its you know, it's not a new website or a website trying to to break ground or anything it, it ha- it's ha- it's established already it doesn't need to really do anything other than maintain itself and i certainly think um a, a wife or anybody i mean i literally know kids that are in sixth seventh eighth grade that i could spend you know three or four days with them and they'd be able to run the website uh again as good or better than Smith, who's who, again who's probably his his greatest quality his best asset was he was a hustler he um was a go-getter he was a salesman and, um, you know, minus that, I still think the, the site, uh, you know, d- does fine. And, and I'm sure, um, you know, for, again, for the kids and family's sake, as I'm reading through these documents, you know, part of me is, is you know, I feel bad, you know, it's just kind of a, a tragedy. It's kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to say it's like sad because you know, there's a lot, a lot of things going on in the world that are far, far more sad or or heartbreaking than this but here's a guy that was making a lot of money providing for his family and he's um completely blown in and now he's going off the deep end trying to steal the money um from his wife and from his family and it's just it's uh you know a sad situation and like i said i think the best outcome for smith is to go to the slammer get off the drugs uh, maybe have some time to reflect and, and come out and hope his wife takes him back because that's the only way he'll ever um, be a part of that website uh, again, as far as uh, from what I see. Right. So so if the wife, you know, maybe the wife, you know, maybe she takes it over and, and does a great job and, and runs it. But maybe maybe she just wants to do something else or she has another job or some other way to make money. What if she sold it? The more we're talking about this, isn't this a great investment? Would you rather here's a question for you. Would you rather have the cardboard connection website or would you rather the for four hundred thousand? Or would you rather pay four hundred thousand for the Mike Trout one hundred and one super fractor that uh, Vegas Day bought? Well, if I mean if uh, if Cardboard Connection makes a quarter million, I'd probably rather have um, I'd probably rather have the uh, Cardboard Connection. Website what if it makes ten thousand? What if it grosses ten thousand and maybe he, say he has four thousand? Let's say he has five thousand in expenses. Let's say it makes five thousand a month. It makes sixty thousand a year. So it, sixty thousand a year on the on the on the Empire Flippers kind of website market, you're gonna get you know three times that, especially for a, a website like uh, I, I keep wanting to say check out my cards, but Cardboard Connection, uh, this website uh, needs employees, it needs updating. It's basically a job. Like right. I've, uh, I remember sitting through a conference of guys that buy and sell websites, and they're like, "Are you buying a website or are you buying a job?" And Cardboard Connection is a job it's it's not legacy content that can just sit there untouched and unmolested and and churn in money also i think they have advertisers that pay for banner spots so you kind of have to massage them and uh, as one kind of rotates off you've got to go find another one so there's kind of a sales aspect to it there's a lot of posting so it is actually a a job and so for me a website like that's going to be worth at, at most on a really really good day four times what it nets and so if it's netting 50 grand yeah you could probably pay 200 for it um on a really really good day um whereas an autopilot website that doesn't need any work and is just kind of a a ppc lead magnet kind of thing you can get seven eight nine ten uh times your earnings on something like that because the guy's just gonna buy it and 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 set it and forget it whereas check out my car excuse me cardboard connection you need a lot of employees and a lot of uh kind of attention and um, massaging and fondling uh, the website and so it's not quite as you know people might think it's this this great asset on the secondary market not uh from my experience not a huge asset but then but you know versus a baseball card absolutely rather have a website that had the ability to pay me because with a Mike Trout autograph, the card's got to go up in value and I've got to sell it for me to make money. Okay. Whereas, right. uh, you, you know, you can let people like, hold it. Don't you think fondlers would pay $10 at the national to just hold it? You maybe take a photo with it or something. I could see that, but then I'd have to fly all the way to the national, 
buy a booth and, and, you know, hang out there or what, you know, whatever. I'd have to coordinate all that. It'd be a lot of work. Um, I honestly think, you know, baseball cards are, are not an investment. Okay. They don't, they don't pay you. It's not, they're, they're not dividend paying stocks or, or, um, you know, a real estate where you can generate cash flow by, by renting it out or whatever you know, it's a non-performing asset. It, it, it literally sits there, does nothing for you. Uh, you got to hope that Mike Trout doesn't go off the deep end and pull an OJ or pull a, a whoever and falls out of favor or let, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. You know, really didn't do any of that. He just got hurt a lot. Pool holes. So, um, pool holes too. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, People never talk about that, how big a star <laughs> he was and his cards were so oh, yeah. high priced. And then he kind of fell off and little rumors here yeah. and there. But even Jeter, even Jeter, I've noticed over the last couple of years, I have some Jeter cards. They don't move nearly as fast as they, they have been. And definitely the prices, uh, you know, they're not cheap or bottom, you know, they haven't bottomed, uh, to the point where it's, you know, it's this crazy thing, but definitely the market softens as you, as you move on in your career. And, and that's certainly going to happen to, to Trout. Um, and, and every ball player, you know, every baseball player, look at Michael Jordan. Um, you know, there, there's been softness in, in his stuff. So happens to everybody, but I, I definitely think, I, I, you know, I'd definitely rather have a website versus a, a baseball card any day of the week. Just simply, simple for the fact that the baseball card doesn't perform. It doesn't do anything uh, until you sell it. Um, and so, and, and it, 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 you know, how hard is it to sell a baseball card worth 400,000, the market and the potential buyers is hmm. a really narrow range. Whereas websites, th- this lady could put a cardboard connection on, on uh, any number of the website flipping, you know, flippa and empire flippers and all this. And she, she would get, th- there'd be guys falling over themselves. Um, not card guys. But just right. website guys that would literally be falling over themselves saying, oh, wow, they made a quarter million, but this idiot spent thousands of dollars on booths. He's got all these American employees. I'll hire some guys from the Philippines that will do a better job and work twice as hard and, and make three times as less. So um, there's guys that could see uh, – and then not to mention the leaks of the drugs and all the other stuff that oh, he had Lord. going on. So th- there's people that would fall over themselves uh, to buy this website, and they're not – they're not card guys. It's not Beckett. It's not you and I. It would literally be um, guys yeah. that, that own lots of websites and w- would look at this as just kind of a, a you know a performing asset or you know like a person with a portfolio of 40, 50 homes in their real estate. You know they're not yeah. sitting there really caring about each home and, and trying to get every blade of grass to grow perfectly. They just want somebody in there renting it out and paying the you know paying the mortgage and the asset's going to go up. And so uh, you know. It's definitely a, a, a valuable asset from that perspective, but uh, you know, compared to cards, it's, there, there's no comparison, in my opinion. Well, aren't these people? There's like a hundred group breakers on Breakers TV, and all these people, you know, steal. And we got group breakers stealing cards and shit. This guy's on ecstasy and heroin and in and out of jail and and just fucking up his life, and he's easily making a, a, a revenue ten to twenty thousand dollars a month. On this baseball card site, I, I mean, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, n- not to compliment a felon, but this guy was a hustler. From every, again, it's not somebody I ever talked to, not somebody I ever met, but from everything that I've heard and people have contacted me with, the guy was a hustler. And I, you know, a lot of these card fondlers, the only thing that they, you know, they hustle about is going to Target and picking up the new Mega Box or picking up the four or five cards that are missing from their set. That's the only thing that really, you know, they hustle about. Um, so if you turn that off and then focused on maybe making some money instead of uh, group breaking or doing some of this other stuff and you, and you looked around the hobby and saw the people that were actually doing really well, um, maybe it makes sense not to really sell uh, the cards themselves. I mean, you and I were 10 years ago at this time, we're, we're dead broke. And, and all we were doing was selling the cards, selling the memorabilia. You know, flash forward 10 years later, I mean, I'm selling a little bit on Amazon. It's probably... You know, it's 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 really a very small amount of my income, and and it could go to zero tomorrow, and I, I wouldn't blink an eye. But um, you know, life has gotten a lot better ever since I got out of the the buying and selling baseball card game and gotten into um, putting up content that is um, relatively timeless and um, 
something that people search for and something that people consume uh, day after day, year after year, whereas the baseball cards sitting on your wall aren't doing anything. And, you know, if you're a group breaker, yes, you might make a little bit of money breaking national treasures or whatever's out uh, today. Uh, but the, the, the minute that's sold out, it's over. You know, my, my, Mike Smith could, could, you know, turn off all the employees on his website, probably even zero out all the advertisers and still get a check every month. Every month. Every For month. decades, probably, as long as the site still works. Yeah, as long as you keep it. I mean, that's kind of where Sports Card Radio is at. I mean, we, are, we have a guy that's working on it now, but it's not, you know, I don't want to say that we're, you know, again, this is a site that could go to zero or could get shut off tomorrow, and I wouldn't, you know, it's not going to affect my day any. So, you know, but it, it draws a check every month, okay? Every month I'm getting a check uh, from Sports Card Radio, from work that was done years ago. So, it, you know, that... that I think that that's that's the, how people get themselves in these business models where, it, it, you know, yeah, you can make a little bit of money, but if you truly want to uh, separate yourself and really become, uh, you know, really wealthy to where you have probably more more money than you do time, then um, you know you've really got to uh, invest in, you know, again, how many websites like Cardboard Connection are out there? You know, yes, there's there's a lot. But how many group breakers are out there? God oh, knows. You put, up an article, you put up an article about some guy that was all tatted up and looked like he was like, I wouldn't trust him with uh, a nickel, let alone uh, breaking cards. And this guy's filling breaks. And, 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 you know, it's like there's a, there's breakers all over the place. There's Unbelievable. Guys, you know, there's guys that don't even have websites. They're just on Facebook or whatever. And they're buying, they don't even have wholesale accounts. They just buy it from blowout or whatever. So, I mean, being a breaker is a dime a dozen. And, and again, I could, I could teach an eighth grader how to be a breaker in, in, in 30 minutes. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it, 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 you're just not providing a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of skill involved in breaking. And again, there's not a lot of upside because there's just so many people that are going to put their hand in that till, whether it's the Panini or leagues or the players, uh, your payment processor, uh, and, and not to mention you've got all this competition and, and, and the price of the products is not always, you know, uh, uh, you know, basketball could be hot this year. Baseball could be hot this year. But, you know, as I know, I've been putting in pre-orders for Topps Baseball. And it's like I just told the guy I want – you know, I want a case of every product. I don't care what it is. And, you know, he calls me back and I get two, you know, two boxes, one boxes here and there. And, and you know, I'm doing six, seven thousand dollars a month through a distributor. So it's not like I'm some small account with them. So, you know, you, you could have you could telegraph Otani was going to be the greatest thing ever. And it was or Eric Judge was going to be the greatest ever. But if you can only get your hands on 12 boxes, 10 boxes. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be able to pay your mortgage and maybe uh, eat a little bit, but are you gonna go out and get an 18 karat gold Rolex? Are you gonna go upgrade from the, the Honda Civic to the you know the E43? No, you're not. So um, you know, I, I don't think people uh, r r really um, really focus on that as much, uh, or, or really have again. Smith was a hustler. Smith was a go getter, and. Um, he, he ultimately uh, did that enough to, to build up something that was really successful for him and his family. And, and honestly, a lot of that hard work, hopefully, will, will uh, carry on, just not uh, benefiting him. Right, yeah, because he's got a wife and two kids who, you know, if, if the documents are correct, this is their sole income. So hopefully, you know, hopefully she does take it over. Hopefully she doesn't get suckered into selling it for, I think anything under a hundred grand is absolutely stealing it. I mean, just stone dead stealing it. I think, I think it, the revenue's more in the 10 to 15,000 a month. And then there's expenses. He's probably got at least a hundred, $150 hosting plan. And uh, here's, you know. here's the other point about that is, is he probably was making more on this website. And so there's probably a lot of people listening here saying, God damn, if I could make 10,000 in a whole year, let alone a whole month on a website, I'd be doing backflips. There's guys that are listening right now that would do a backflip. Their blog made $10,000 in a year or maybe even two years, let alone a month. 
But the problem is, Smith was making way more than this. Okay, everybody that had a blog four or five years ago was making way more the money than that, and it came even easier uh, than it did now. So you have to look at it almost from that perspective. Smith has probably gone from fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars a month on this website now down to t- ten. Uh, you know, maybe even sub ten thousand dollars a month, and so that's a there's a big difference from going zero to ten thousand and going from twenty thousand a month down to ten. Um, you're you know, and, and, and I I would bet not again not knowing this guy personally, this is this is likely what has deteriorated his life is that he was once making a lot of money off this website and profitably ha- profiting heavily. And, and blowing a lot of the money. Again, he would go to events and roll five, six, seven deep, and, and nobody even knew who these guys were. They, they, you know, they barely contributed to his website. So he's gone from, you know, kind of the the outhouse to the penthouse, and now he's having to go back to the outhouse. And that's all, you know, I think Mark Cuban said it once on uh, once on Shark Tank. You know, it, 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 you know, to go from filet mignon back to mac and cheese is really difficult. And I think not that that Smith, you know, I mean, he's really gone from maybe marijuana to heroin and now he's, you know, running out of money. He's got to go back to marijuana. Uh, That's really the analogy that applies to him. But uh, that's where he is in his life. And so, again, a lot of people listening probably think, oh, my God, quarter million dollars a year. He's balling. You know, what is he doing? Uh, No, he's actually probably making way less money on this website than he once did. And uh, that definitely affects you. I mean, this is something that I, I've gone through uh, owning numerous websites. You know, they make a lot of money. And then, uh, you know, uh, advertiser changes their terms. Uh, it converts less. Google stacks seven, or, you know, seven ads on top of a page to where the organic result is, is all the way down at the bottom of the page. And you get no traffic anymore unless you're paying for it. So, you know, those kind of things uh, happen. Uh, and that, and again, another thing that I always kind of heard about Smith, um, probably not very good at adjusting. He was uh, he, he kind of put his head down uh, and, and and went full force and wasn't really um, preparing or really um, telegraphing maybe uh, future challenges, future problems. And I think that's that's apparent because I, I guarantee you his family has no savings, um, no money, uh, and, and that's. You know that's that's where a lot of people are in life. But um, if you are making a quarter million dollars off this website and you have no savings and you have to basically uh, log into your to your company or your wife's PayPal account and steal money, it's just you know honestly I don't feel sorry for anybody in that in that position. He should have had uh, thousands and tens of thousands of dollars sitting in a bank account or sitting in some stocks or sitting in some kind of other asset. But literally, again, as the court documents say. This is their. This is the family's sole source of income, and that's you know. Right. I, I, I don't. I don't know how a father sleeps at night, uh, knowing that s- some website is the only way your family is eating. Um, you know, in, in my case, that that is somewhat the case. But again, my websites could go to zero. The the whole internet could shut down. And uh, as long as I could log into my Schwab account or lo- log into a bank account, I'll be able to uh, pull a little bit of money out and, and maybe go down to the, the pawn shop and, and and hawk a Rolex for for ten grand. I'd be you know I'd be fine. So um, you know I don't feel sorry for him. Uh, I, I you know I, I don't feel sorry for the wife. Um, you know the kids I definitely feel for. But um, as long as you know is is. As long as it all works out and, and this website keeps making that money, they'll be fine, you know? Right. We definitely don't feel sorry for any of these dumbasses sitting on Breakers TV struggling Not or either. people open a card shop struggling doing any of this shit. You dumbass just should have just been copying and pasting fucking shit off the Tops website, shit off the Panini's website, and make exactly. a quarter million like this guy hooked on H&X. So, again, in exactly. one sense, we're sitting here ripping him. In one sense, we're like, man, this guy was on H&X making up to a quarter million dollars in revenue on a website per year. So, exactly. you know, everybody talks about, you know, a competition in this online and group breaking at shows and stuff. God damn, it wouldn't take that. You know, everybody talks about how, where this guy ranks in Google. It wouldn't take that much money to fucking 
just run ads on every fucking key Bowman tops, every key set. You really just want to, if you really wanted to attack cardboard connection, if you, if, if you wanted to oh, compete God. against them, just compete on the big, big sets. Pay to advertise on Bowman Top Series One, and 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 by big sets I mean the shit that everybody can get, not this stupid high end shit that nobody really cares about. That's it's, gone in a week. That's gone that's in a week. Literally gone in a week. Yeah, that you can't buy at Target and Walmart and all year round. People don't build a set. People don't collect National Treasures to build the set and have to look at the checklist and wonder where they're at and wonder how many more they need to get. They're literally opening it to hit the Jason Tatum and and Kyle Kuzma and flip it on eBay or, or you know send it to BGS and that's it. Right. So, the big you know, sets are Top Series 1, uh, Bowman, Bowman Chrome. In football, it used to be, you know, the base top set scores a decent set to, to spend some money on, spend some time on. The World Cup on. stickers. Right. The, the, how, yeah, the World Cup sticker, stickers, soccer stickers, that's a great set to focus on. Yeah, there, there's just a lot. You know, there's, there's a – the thing is, is it, you know – once you get into in that realm, there's just so many things you can make money. I was, you know, watching the royal wedding. There are people that made more money in over two or three days of that royal wedding, and they won't have to put up any more content or work the rest of the year because of the kind of traffic and attention um, something right. like that will, will bring to certain types of content, certain types of websites over two or three days. You realize that when you sell football tickets, you're only working. You know, right. really two months, you know, football season is really hot for only about two months of the year. And that's it. But that, you know, when it's something that big, when it's a multi, multi-billion dollar business, when it's something that big, you really can crush it. And, and you know, if you want to narrow that down to sports cards, you've got to focus it on the sets that are, are constantly out, that are out there and read, readily available. If you do that, uh, you know, hey, we were on. Uh, the show, it was last year during the national telling people exactly what content to put up on their mm-hmm. website. We literally told people exactly what sets and exactly what content to put up on their websites. I haven't seen anybody put it up except for us. And lo and behold, you go to our website and those are constant outside of, you know, Mike Smith mugshot. Those, uh, and you know, some of the other kind of sensational stories and Dak Prescott and and things like that, and group breakers scamming people. You know, the old time baseball sets uh, are, oh. are the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, eighty nine uh, tops, eighty seven Fleer, or whatever yeah, it's called, eighty nine Fleer, or whatever. Yep, those are. You know, walk down my street. I could walk down my street and knock on people's doors and say, "Hey, you got any baseball cards?" I would guarantee you, every third or fourth house would have baseball cards. They're not going to have national treasures. They're not going to have this year's tops. They're not going to have tops in the last ten years. What are they going to pull out? A box of eighty-eight Fleer, a box of eighty-nine tops, a box of eighty-nine Donruss. That's what people are going to have. That's what people are going to go through their, um, you know, their their garage or their their son's, you know, closet or whatever, and find these cards and then go look for information about them. So, you know. It, it, there's just a lot. I mean, we're giving away. I mean, we should charge. No you know, shit. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of information. I mean, <laughs> if you think if Mike Smith has made a quarter million on his side, I mean, the reason why Colin and I have a little bit of an authority to fucking talk about this. If you think this motherfucker has made a nickel on his site, how much you think Colin have made on sports card radio? And we're smart enough that that's not our only web asset. We've, created other websites that that are profitable and do make money I mean, and more profitable I mean, than the card website the point, we we don't care about the website so we can put up hit pieces we can put up you know people are like oh you you're you're just trying to get clicks and you're just trying to get this and that and it's like you know it's you know i get you know the clicks that sports card radio can get in a day i have websites that do that in an hour um, oh, for sure. So, You're right. And, and, you know, and, and God knows if you want to, pay, you know, uh, I pretty much make all my money by, by buying Google ads. Um, you know, the, the way when, once Google took away, when you used to do a Google search, there were ads on the top and they used to only have one or two. And then there was a sidebar with like eight or nine ads. Well, a couple of years ago, they did away with that. And now they're stacking four, five, six ads yeah. on, on the top of a search result. So it's like, for me, that signaled, oh, my God, who cares about uh, ranking and, and building links and all this other shit? Why don't I just pay 13 cents or 8 cents or whatever it is 
to be in the top three or four positions, and, and that's it. That's it. Well, well, here's another funny tidbit. It's probably yesterday might have been one of the most popular days ever on Sports Card Radio, and all the traffic was from Facebook. It wasn't from people searching Google. It was all from Facebook. Right. And, and really, that that's going to be cardboard. I mean, if we want to, like, you know, if I was sitting here um, analyzing the asset and if, the, you know, if you, the wife had slid into your DMs and we were kind of consulting her a little bit, I tell her her challenge going forward is um, generating uh, other traffic sources uh, because, you know, more people are starting their day on Facebook. More people are starting their day on Twitter. When it comes to product searches, Amazon it actually gets more product searches than um, Google. And so more people are searching for products, searching for things uh, right to Google. And certainly within the card community, if you're searching for uh, maybe certain cards, you might just go to check out my cards and search right. for cards there. You might go to Beckett and search for cards there. Um, you might, again, just go right to Topps website or right to Panini's eBay. website. And you might go to eBay. Exactly. And so whereas, you know, four, five, six years ago, the – the um, you know, the way people used the Internet was, was completely, you know, Google was your home screen. You, you woke up to Google and you started your day there. Now people are starting their day, um, again, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat. And that's where people are consuming uh, a huge amounts of content and huge amount of time. And that's where you're that, – that is where you're – that's where the greatest opportunity is is um in my opinion unless you were going to buy for, buy the traffic but again um if you're going to go that route you might as well go like a royal wedding or go yeah. to you know some of these tv shows or a netflix series or um you know the election something, the election 2020 yeah, election God. or something 2020 election there's just lots of different topics and lots of different subjects if i was going to devote time to uh, and devote, you know, buying ads and bu buying traffic and, and acquiring it that way. There's, there's a lot of other ways I, I do that. So, you know, again, if I was, uh, you know, advising, uh, you know, somebody that was interested in purchasing Cardboard Connection or, or maybe even setting up a website um, in that same vein, I would say, you know, look at all your other traffic sources out there. God, there's there's so many, you know, compared to just four or five years ago, let alone 10, I mean, 10 years, I think he set up the website close to 10 years ago now mm -hmm. um, co just completely i mean the the web is just completely there were there you know the iphone was barely um you know barely had gained traction 10 years ago now everybody you know starts and ends their day on their iphone so you know everything's just completely changed and if you're not again smith didn't strike me as a guy that was really focused on that kind of stuff. He was just really focused on getting his next dollar, getting his next advertiser, getting the next, uh, you know, minion to come right for him for whatever they, they pay over there. Um, and getting up the content and, and calling it a day. So, uh, definitely a lot of, there's again, a lot of opportunity in the sports card content world, but, um, quite frankly, uh, God, there's, you know, there, there, it, it you know, ten years have passed. At one time, sports car radio was was our sole income and was a huge amount of our income. Now it's, you know, like I said, we we put up hit pieces really to just to take jabs and to to have fun. People think we're doing this to to get popular and to get clicks and stuff. If I wanted to do that, I just put up stuff about eighty nine tops and how great Panini is and how right. great Tops is and how awesome they are and how great the cards are. And here's a hot list of Shinjo Otani's. Uh, baseball cards and here's where to get them and click here and click there um you know quite frankly there's just there's so many other ways to uh generate money and also having all your eggs in one basket uh as smith has found out is, is a terrible thing because if you go you know heaven forbid you go through a divorce or you fall on some hard times all of a sudden the judge can say oh no you don't you own 90 percent of that website actually you don't your wife does right and, you know, if you're not sitting there on any kind of other asset, savings, um, anything, just, I mean, a gold watch that you could take to a pawn shop. Anything. Anything. Cards. He, cards. cards. He has nothing. He has no he cards. has nothing but a, a crack pipe and, uh, you know, a few, probably nine Some millimeters. Needles. And that's yeah. it. 
That's it. Yeah, he has guns. Yeah. Have, and, a, and a judge has told him he can't have those. Judge has told him not to have guns. It's so a felony if he gets caught with one. It's a felony. Yeah. So, just stupid. Um, in my in my opinion, it's it, it shouldn't be surprising. Um, the the guy from all, again all accounts, people that don't like him, people that liked him, they all hated him. Literally, people that that worked for this guy didn't like him. But he threw his money around, and these guys were desperate for the money. Um, so, so, so they took what they, they, they could get. And, um, you know, now, now maybe it's in a better spot. Now, you know, with the wife running it, um, might, be a be- might, might end up being a, a, a better situation uh, for everybody. Yeah, it might be. I might have to even check to see if she slid into my DMs uh, while, we, while we were talking here. So, yeah. So- See, see how that's see, see how that's going. Right. So. Maybe you'll gain full full control of the website. <laughs> Maybe the judge will say yes. Miss Smith and Mr. Ryan, you guys uh, are now the full owners. Boy, that would chap his ass. Wow. Yeah. For uh, <laughs> I value my life too much, and you know I. Yeah. Right. You know I, I don't know if it's a little too early to to, to make this joke, but I, I think the next mass shooter or next school shooter. I mean, the, the profile A one is Mike Smith. I mean. <laughs> If this guy went and shot up a school in Georgia, would, I mean, I wouldn't fall out of my chair. I know that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was 18 and, and uh, you know, had black, you know, emo hair or whatever, it, it definitely would, would fit into that, uh, fit into that profile. But, you know, I think the point you were making is there's a lot of people in this hobby that, you know, could, could recite the back of, you know, every tops card that was made uh, this year. And, and, you know, you guys uh, love the cards. And here's a guy who's hooked on drugs, hooked on, uh, you know, um, I mean, here's a guy that didn't care about cards, didn't treat his employees very well. Didn't care about anybody. He hacked Tracy Hackler. Hacked Tracy Hackley, Hackler, pretended like he was buddy-buddy with Panini and then hacked into them. This is a guy that, that constantly backstabbed and, and, and did shady shit, and he made a bunch of money. And the only way it got fucked up was, a, you know, he, he got some felonies, got in trouble with the law, and a judge said, oh, yeah, you, you know, you don't have that website anymore. Basically, the judge had to take it away from him. And we got guys that are on Breakers TV and that are, you know, driving to five different targets to get mega boxes, and... What do you, you know? Well, how about this? If you need some money for some cards, a great way would just be to fucking start putting up some content. Maybe your blog could generate enough money to buy some buy some boxes. Maybe those boxes could be a tax write off for your for your business, and so you, you could feed your crack addiction by buying yeah. boxes on your profitable but, website. You know, to, to kind of tangent a little bit, I've seen you know th- there seems to be in the community kind of this negative stigma on selling cards for a profit. There was a guy that posted like 60 mega boxes, and I was like, damn, this guy is a piece. He went to a bunch of different right. targets and got, got like 60, 60 mega boxes, and people were like, oh, you know, good good job leaving any of the boxes for oh, the God. kids. And, and I was thinking to myself, I, you know, I hang out with a lot of kids. None of them want to open up a $40 mega box, okay, from, from Target. So, you know, uh, the, you know, and, and we all want cards to get popular and to be worth money. And then all of a sudden, here we are, you know, they, they are worth money and they're, and they're considered rare and desirable. And now people are bitching and moaning about it. So Everybody's they, just jealous. Everybody's just, everybody. It, it, it's cool when you're the one posting the I got this shot. Look at my card. Everybody counts their likes and kind of get the endorphins running in their head. When it's somebody else getting 60 mega boxes or, or if it's Vegas Dave getting the four hundred thousand dollar super fractor. Right. Jealousy. Jealousy. That's really, uh, I think, what it boils down to, just a lot oh, of absolutely. jealousy. Absolutely. I mean, my, my Twitter stream is filled with, here. you know, I got this, I got this grade, I got this card, I pop, you know, I hit this out of a break, I did this, I did that. I, I post a picture of me in a big baller brand sweater and a $30,000 Rolex, and people are hating on me. And I'm right. like, damn. I mean, these guys are, you know, you guys will fall over yourselves if it's some, uh, athlete signed on a sticker that's stuck on a card that's not rare at all. 
And then you hate on a guy that's actually flashing the big ball of brand. Triple B, stay in your lane is what I would say to a lot of people out there. You know, here we are telling you, you know, you can make money on your website, but quite frankly, if you're on, if you're on social media and you're making fun of people that are buying 60 mega boxes, or you're making fun of the people that are trying to profit off Otani or whatever, you're saying, hey, save save a couple boxes for the kids. I've never seen a kid in Target go in there and buy a mega box. Okay, they're playing Fortnite and uh, you know, trying to get. You know, go go from their mom's hand me down iPhone six up to an iPhone eight. That's all they fucking care about. They don't care about fucking mega boxes and and tops chrome and Otani and pulling a uh, you know atomic triple refractor or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Hey, so, maybe the key to the sports cars is caring less. I mean, Smith didn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck about any of you. Doesn't give a fuck about his wife. Doesn't give a fuck about his employees. He stole money out of the account. He's on uh, ecstasy. He's on H. Well, and I think we kind of exemplify that as well. Our website basically bashes and smashes. Right, and makes that money. That does something stupid. And like I said, the site makes money. Uh, uh, really, enough to pay for a pretty nice car and the insurance and the gas. Done. And this is a website that, you know, we don't promote. I'm not on Twitter blasting links. I think you're getting on face- Facebook is... Um, a tremendous traffic source and a tremendous way to, to generate traffic um, and, and, and even kind of boosting your posts and, and stuff like that is a way, way to make money. But this is not a website that, um, that, I, that I care about. If it, if it literally got hacked and shut down, it would take me three or four days to, to muster up the energy to go and, and, and fire it back up again. Whereas I've got other sites where if they get hacked, I'm literally stopping what I'm doing and, and going to rush home and fix it. Right. Yeah. I've got a hundred, I probably got a hundred messages about what my princess beanie baby, what my, what, what does the stamp inside my tush tag on my peace bear mean and all this fucking shit waiting for me after we get off the phone here. So exactly. I mean, yeah, I've been using Facebook for my beanie babies website. Cause I have a large group that like whatever they fucking sit there and talk to each other all day and fondle their beanie babies. But so, but some of these hit pieces that, I mean, the, the group breaker one was, was got as many hits damn near as the Smith post. And that was like four sentences. And here's the, here's a video of this guy. So it's not, sometimes it's not, you know, you know, aggregating all this data and putting up a checklist and ranking in Google. It's like fucking writing four sentences and posting a video. Hey, you're here. Look at this fucking idiot. This fucking neck tatted up right. idiot stealing these cards with his I, daughter in the room. The, the, I think the the counterpoint to that: Are you going to pay your bills? Really putting up that kind of content? Probably not. Um, but, but it could sub like it, it if if you had a site that you were trying to gain traction, if you were trying to become a cardboard connection, if you were trying to become a Beckett, then yes, you probably should be putting absolutely. up those hit pieces. In addition, to, look at cardboard connection. One of the reasons why it became popular was the quote "Law of Cards" uh, series, and how ironic. How ironic is it that that website chronicled Richard McWilliams drinking problems, chronicled uh, all kinds of shady stuff that was going on in the hobby. And here is Mike Smith himself fucking captain shady with 10 felony yeah. counts in the last two years. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of why, that's kind of why we're doing it too. This guy was, was thick with irony and kind of, um, you know, again, he, uh, four years ago, he was offering a, us gas money to the next uh, court event. And four years later, he's, he's literally stealing money out of his uh, company and his wife's account um, because he's on his last dollar. Right. The haters, so. the haters aren't listening, you know, an hour in here. But good Lord, if anybody ever fucking hates it, it's like, dude, go to, just type in law of card cardboard connection on Google. And how many fucking articles about legal dramas and courtroom uh, right. dramas has that site written? And it's on that website. Right. And the motherfucker who owns it has 10 felonies in the last two years and then stole money from the fucking company itself and his wife and kids? Stop. Damn, that should be A1 lead. And any anybody trying to get hits or get get credibility in the industry, it's like if you're a breaker, I don't know how you get credibility. If you're, if you're a blogger and you want some credibility, fucking write, write a story on Mike Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't think it's hard to get credibility when you've got guys that are all tatted up. He's got his four-year-old right. daughter, uh, you know, two feet away, and he's stealing cards right on camera. I mean, these guys are like, 
I mean, I, I don't know. I think, it, you know, some of these guys must be from, you know, Hobunk, you know, Iowa or fucking. Come out to the nowhere. national, come out to the national and you'll, you'll see exactly that. Uh, what you described Hobunk, whatever that means. That's exactly what the fits the demographic of the card. I mean, world. I don't want to say Trump demographic cause he's my boy, but that's, you know, they're, they're <laughs> definitely, uh, there's definitely some truth in that. I mean, I'm not uh, so ignorant to be to be blind to that. There's definitely some truth in, in kind of the Trump demographic, the Duck Dynasty type demographic, where these guys, you know, are literally so so stupid that you know they look at somebody like Mike Smith, they look at some guy that's all tatted up and he's breaking, you know, like oh this guy is really, you know, look at this guy's business and look what he's doing, you know, what an asset to the hobby. Oh my God, if cardboard connection went away oh oh my fucking god it'd be a tragedy no it wouldn't <laughs> there'd be yeah. about 12 different sites that would be able to step in uh and, and and not to mention like we said you know cardboard connection is not putting up exclusive information they literally wait around for panini to post it or tops to post it or anybody else to post it and then they uh you know i think that was part of smith's little mo too i think he set up little scripts and stuff to where uh he kind of knew when a website got pinged with new information, and he he would go, he would send one of his little writers over there to to get the job done. So, uh, you know, it's not it's not hard, it's not uh, not rocket science. Um, but but if you're you're sitting around more worried about more worried about uh, you know what cards you're missing out of your top series one uh, base set than making money, uh, chances are you're not making any money. And you do like making money, don't you? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we're an hour in. That was, you know, I think that, you know, I think we've given the card followers enough time, enough free information. Good Lord. We, 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 we gave them enough information to set up a quarter million dollar fucking website per year. This fucking stupid hobby, literally probably by himself. They could do it damn near by himself. If they want to fucking work all day, eight, 10 hours a day, almost six, seven days well, a week. Don't even, I mean, going zero to you know, two thousand five hundred dollars would be would be would be yeah. Again, going from zero uh, to any amount of money is is often uh, very very rewarding and often very much worth it. It's when you go from twenty five hundred dollars a month down to eight hundred dollars a month. That's that's yep. when it hits your gut. That's when it's gut check time. And and my guess is Mike Smith couldn't handle that. Couldn't handle right. cardboard connection making thousands and thousands of dollars, having four, five, six employees getting booths at the national, doing booths at the industry summit, having everybody look at him. I think it, all his employees would, would refer to him as the boss or the Lord. you know the guy in charge or whatever. And he went from that to having to really scale back, scale down, uh, you know, relying on a, more of a, a sales model where he's got to reach out to um, card sellers and consigners and, and, and other types of advertisers to come in there and advertise to really make up the money that he, he had lost from, uh, you know, affiliate sales and stuff that, that is just, um, you know, those payments have gotten cut back um, tremendously over the last couple of years, and he couldn't handle it. So he wasn't a, C a real CEO would have foreseen all that. That's why I always make fun. I always make fun of him uh, for calling himself a CEO. And kind of referring to, you know, again, he had all his employees call him boss or whatever. Call him Everything CEO. Had, they would fucking call yeah, him CEO. They had to call him CEO. He wasn't a CEO. A real CEO would have foreseen all that. Would have foreseen, uh, you know, I, I even did a podcast. I, I don't know what number it was, uh, but it was years ago. I remember doing a podcast saying, hey, just got an email from eBay Partner Network saying they were going to cut. Uh, they were going to cut the commissions. And I said on that show. That it was gonna that it was gonna change the way people put up content uh, in the sports card business. It was gonna uh, you know affect a lot of people from the forums to websites like Sports Card Radio, websites like Cardboard Connection, websites all over. It was yep. gonna affect the industry tremendously. And a real CEO, a real CEO would have foreseen all that and started planning for that. And the minute I got that email from eBay. Uh, you know, we started pivoting. We were already kind of pivoting before that, but that accelerated the pivot away from, okay, I'm not putting up any more sports cards. I mean, for a few years there, we didn't even put any information on our website. 
right? It there's just, like a it, gap. It, yeah, there's like a gap where there's like there's nothing years. on there. Yeah. It just wasn't worth it. Okay, yeah, we could have put it up ourselves or we could have paid somebody else to do it, but you weren't going to make any money. And that's what happened to Smeed. He didn't adjust. He didn't, he, he, he didn't know how to pivot. And so he just kept putting up the content, putting up the content, paying other people to do it, paying for boots, paying for promotion. And all of a sudden the money started to dry out and started to go away. And that's how you can look at, oh, God, he makes a quarter million dollars. He must be rich. No, he blew it all. He blew yeah. it all, not just on the drugs and the, and, and the partying or whatever else he was doing. Uh, but he, he blew it on a website where a real CEO would have had a plan. And, and, and a plan of attack and, and, and a way to to sustain that and keep it going and make it better. But he's not a CEO. He's a criminal. He's a drug addict. He's a deadbeat. And quite frankly, his best option these days is probably ending up in jail. So. Well, I, I know of, you're not going to be in jail today. You know, what you, you what do you got planned for the rest of the day? I have got, um, I, I'm... You know, I'm knee deep in projects. I'm making a screen door. I've made a toy chest. I've got, a, you know, $1,000 worth of DeWalt tools out here that I'm putting to work. I've got a graduation uh, later where I'm presenting uh, a scholarship to um, a young student. And so, um, yeah, I'm definitely not going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to be in front of probably, you know, 1,000 people, 1,500 people later tonight presenting a, a, a scholarship. So, Jesus, um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, work is definitely not on my mind. What day is it? Wednesday? Not, I'm not working today and uh, just got a lot of projects and a lot of uh, a lot of things going on. But uh, definitely not uh, definitely not tripping about uh, the old bank account, not tripping about where uh, where Mike Smith is laying his head these days, because uh, wherever it is. Uh, it's probably uh, where he deserves, which is in a jail cell. <laughs> Woo! Well, that'll do it. Uh, signing off here, the R-rated podcast. Yep. Sounds good.